As the founder of a data scraping platform, I'm often asked, hey, is what you do legal? To which I say, have you ever heard of Google or Expedia? All those companies are doing data scraping in some shape or form. Data scraping is a very broad term that can include collecting data from an official API, maybe you pay for, maybe it's free, to doing some unofficial scraping from websites that frankly don't care and want to be scraped because it helps them. So I'm not a lawyer, this is not legal advice, this is just me sharing what I've observed after helping over a hundred different companies successfully onboard to this DC data platform. I've helped a lot of industries scrape data and help make other businesses more efficient and more profitable, and it's all for good. I'm gonna share with you two main things that you need to ask yourself before you consider scraping data. Do you have the right to access the data you want to scrape? And is the rate at which you're scraping it the same as which a human would be doing it or if you hired someone to do it? Here's an example of very legal data scraping. YouTube offers an official API you can register to use in which once you register, you have the right to access their API and any information the API gives you. Such as, let's say you wanted to scrape the comments for this video down below, you could use the YouTube API and do that and as long as you cooperate within the rate limits that the API gives you, you're doing everything perfectly fine. You're scraping data from YouTube. There's another practice called web crawling, which is what Google and search engines do, where they have an automated spider that crawls the webs, they visit hyperlinks, and they look for a special robots.txt file that says, hey, if you're Googlebot, you're allowed to scrape all these pages and index my content so it shows up on Google. Again, that's clearly a case where the website wants to be scraped and makes a spider able to index its content. And then there are other cases where maybe you find a hidden API, like let's say you find a Shopify store you really like and you're able to get their prices and you set up an Instagram post and you refer that store hundreds of thousands of sales and you get that store a lot of business. Do you think the store is gonna be upset that you found an unofficial API and sent them all that traffic? No. Some websites, frankly, they haven't invested in building an official API, but they benefit from other people scraping their data via unofficial APIs, which you can see in my other videos. So if the company doesn't really care or do much to stop this because they're benefiting from it, is it really illegal? Now I know what you're saying, but what if I read the terms of service of Shopify or you know XYZ website and it says that automated access is against the terms of service? Does that make it illegal? Well, no. I'm going to put a link to a case below which was resolved in September 2019 that clearly states if a website makes data publicly available and even if they send you a cease and desist letter and tell you to stop scraping the data, if it's out there in the public and you're not harming the website by pinging it every now and then, it's still perfectly legal to scrape. And just because you violate a website's terms of service doesn't make it truly illegal. It just makes it against the website's terms of service, giving the website recourse to block your account, ban your IP address, shadow ban you, do whatever the website wants to do in your relationship with the website. If you're scraping data responsibly and the website can't really find who you are, you know, there's not much recourse they can do. Furthermore, just look around you. Let's take Instagram, for example. They don't offer an official API but there are plenty of websites that have hashtag analytics and they do social media monitoring for you. There are tons of websites that are clearly scraping this data, even though in Instagram's terms of service, it says you're not allowed to. So either all these thousands of websites from all corners of the world have pre-existing written agreements with Instagram to scrape their data, or they're just doing it. It's sort of like when you're driving on the highway and you see the speed limit's 55 miles an hour, but everyone's going 65 miles an hour, something's going on. It's sort of an unwritten rule where, yeah, if a cop sees you doing something sketchy, they can pull you over if you're going a little bit over the speed limit. Same how if Instagram doesn't like what you're doing, if you're really doing something unethical or hurting Instagram, they can say, hey, you're violating our terms of service. We're you know, threatening you, stop doing this. That's really all it's there for based on my experience. Again, this is not legal advice, this is just things that I've seen after working with over 100 clients. So to summarize, if you have the right to view content that you could otherwise see on an app or on a website, and you collect it at a reasonable rate, like you know one request every few seconds, like what a human would do or if you hired someone to do, 
You're probably in the clear and recent court cases have your back. That you're not doing anything wrong because you're just kind of doing what you could hire someone to do. So then why does data scraping sometimes get a bad rap? Well, if we consider those two basic guidelines I shared with you, we can build a matrix and reveal that data scraping has a few illegal cousins it's not so proud of. Let's talk about the rate in which you access data. So even if you go on a public website, say Wikipedia, but you start refreshing the page, say 10,000 times a second from 100,000 different servers across the globe, that would probably crash Wikipedia and Wikipedia would not be too happy with you. That's called a distributed denial of service attack. And sometimes it happens because someone is malicious, like a state sponsored attack, or sometimes it can just be an accident of a computer program behaving poorly. Check out the article uh, I'll have linked to below. I have an example of how that happened once. So the point is, if you're scraping data, you can't unintentionally overload a website because you could be causing real damages. And in that case, you, the company can go after you and you can get in real trouble. So don't do that. Be sure you only scrape, I'd say, about one request every few seconds per server you're coming from. Or better yet, use an official API and an official API will have a rate limit guideline like the YouTube API. Now things get even more complex once the data in question that you want to scrape is behind a paywall or you have to pay for access. So compared to social media content, which is user generated and the end user is actually the product to the advertiser, other sites like let's say Netflix or the New York Times, they spend a lot of money generating their content and they charge for access to the content. So one, you probably don't wanna be scraping that data anyway. Uh, and two, you can get in a lot more trouble because there's uh, this clause in the CFAA that if you cause or steal more than $5,000 worth of goods and once data has a price tag on it, the company can declare that you're actually stealing monetary value. Like for example, if you share your Netflix password with 10,000 other people and they all go and download every single video on Netflix from around the world, Netflix may say, hey, you downloaded a lot more content than you were entitled to. You know, you stole, I don't know, $10,000 worth of content from us. We want damages. Or, you know, it could be a lot worse than that. You can look into Aaron's Law. This happened uh, because he downloaded a lot of content from JSTOR and stored it. And this is an example of him having access to the data, but him uh, accessing it at a very high rate and downloading the paid data when uh, JSTOR wasn't meant to be downloaded that way. The good news is that nowadays most websites, if you start accessing data too much, especially if it's from like a paid API, they'll start rate limiting you, they'll start cutting you off. Um, also, if you're using a paid API, a lot of times in the pricing plan you go for, they'll tell you how much data you're allowed to scrape. So just don't exceed that and you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, if you're paying for access to something and it's not meant to be accessed by a machine like Netflix, you probably just don't want to scrape it. Look at an alternative, like for Netflix, there's Guidebox, or uh, you can manually do it, or look at maybe metadata if you're doing academic research, or just contact the company. You're already paying them, so you're already a customer, and they may be, they may be willing to help you out. So just be very careful if you're trying to scrape paid data because uh, there is that $5,000 threshold and the CFAA that can really land you in a lot of trouble. And the last problematic cousin of data scraping is, of course, hacking. This refers to getting data that wasn't meant for you. So the case I like to talk about is on the at t iPad website when it came out, I think someone discovered that if you just put in any random phone number and if it was on the system, it would send back the email. So I think this person wrote a script to like put every single possible phone number into the system and then it got back all the emails and uh, he deemed that it was still publicly accessible because you're just entering numbers. And while that is true, I mean, it's just like in your gut, once you start getting other people's PII and they didn't volunteer it, you know, you're clearly violating someone's expectation of privacy. That's really what hacking is. So, you know, if you're scraping an API or, you know, you're looking at HTML or you find a hidden API and, you know, you start like purposely trying to change variables or like change user IDs like add a one and a two and a three to try and look at other people's data. That's clearly breaking the limit and that's unethical. Uh, that will land you in jail. Do not do that. 
Anytime you know, you're looking to scrape data, make sure that it's data you are intended to view as a normal user, whether on your phone or on a website. And you know, regardless of how you got that data, if you're screen scraping HTML or using a, uh, an Ajax API, it's probably irrelevant you know, as long as the data that you're looking at is meant for you and only you. So now, even if you're operating in the full boundaries of the law and scraping from an official API, you still need to be aware of copyright. Even if you're scraping public data, like the fact that the sky is blue, I can still copyright the structure of how I present that information. Check out the link below, I have an example if you want to see that black and white. But basically, you can't take the raw response from an API, even if it's public data, which is deemed public domain, and repurpose it on your own site verbatim because I own the copyright of how I structured that data. What you can do is you can take my data and then write the words the sky is blue on your website because you're citing a fact or you can reshape the JSON or whatever data into your own custom format and repurpose that because you're just representing a fact in your own data structure whether it be in words or JSON or God help you even XML. So I hope this helped answer some questions and you can follow these two general guidelines in that do you have the right to access this data and what's the rate at which you're accessing it. Again, another useful tool I like to always think about is could I just hire someone to sit behind a computer all day and copy paste this data into a spreadsheet or do it from a phone? If the answer is yes, then what you're doing is probably legal and if someone takes you to court, you'll probably win based on recent court findings. Again, I have a link below with some more resources you can check out if you're interested in this. And honestly, just go by your gut. If what you're doing feels wrong and it may cause harm to someone, that's just you know the general rule of life here, is just do no harm in whatever you're doing with data and you'll be fine. Do good with data. That's what CC Data is all about and I've helped over 100 people do this. So check uh, my channel if you wanna learn more about data scraping and please like, subscribe, and comment so I can get your feedback. Thank you, take care, and stay data-driven.